Hello everybody. So today I would like to talk a bit about Gudo Zero Gravity Extruder. So maybe you've already looked at it, you like it, but you're a bit scared to start with the number of pieces that are in there. So I just want to demystify and put you on the right way if you want to build one. So what do you really need? Actually, you need to look at the bill of material, which is very comprehensive and has all what you need. Basically, you need filament to print it and the extruder has been designed with either Biofila, PLA Tech or Extruder Green Tech that are filaments that are very easy to print but at the same time are temperature resistant so it's important to have something that will not melt so you can, definitely cannot use PLA for that. What else do you need? Well, um, you need a set of screws so um, all relatively M3 standard screws and a whole of load of bearing to make all the movement very smooth. For the extruder you need a set of gears, so using the Bonte gears which make you a very good extruder and a piece of PTFE bowden that you will need to go from the extruder bottom until the end. And then obviously remain to drive you need a piece of key steel. So let's have a quick review of all the parts you need to print. When you download the file from Umagine, you get plenty of files and some folders, so where to start? I would personally suggest to start with the stepper holder going into the corner of the printer. It is relatively easy to print and it's a good start to run you know, the filament. Second piece you want to print is the stepper holder. There are two options here. Either you use a direct drive motor but it will not have enough torque for 3 mm filament. It's good if you are using 175. So your best chance is to use the Bontech engine, which is reducted. So you will see here some green parts. These should be printed in flexible filaments like NinjaFlex. Now, without the zero gravity extruder, it might be a challenge to print these. So there are two versions that are delivered. The first one is for this flexible filament, but there is another one which just use the standard filament. So you print them, you get your zero gravity extruder up and running. And after that, you can reprint it with a good quality and having them in flexible filament. So assembly is very easy and you have your motor driving on top. Third part you can printer is this coupler going at the end of the motor and going into the shaft. Next part to print is the extruder itself. And you have the choice here between the Fat Robert and the small Gudo. So uh, this one is the small one. Again, not very difficult to print. A couple of things here. There is a screw in there that should be a screw handed by an hex head. So it might be not easy to, to find such a screw. And I think the easiest is just to have just a three millimeter M3 rod and put a nut at the top and glue the nut with Loctite and thing like that. And, and this one is going here, just in the extruder. So that's the easy thing to do. And last but not least, uh, it needs a spring and the spring is not in the bill of material, but the only thing you can do, and this is the easiest, is to reuse the one that you have on your Ultimaker feeder. It just work and it's easy to do. You also need to connect your extruder to the other hand and there is an adapter plate. So that's the last thing you need to print to have this adapter plate on your Hot end. Now, in here with the bearings, so the weight will go here under and rotate perfectly. So this plate depends on type of hot end you you have. So there are a couple available in the on the Umagine collection. Now, if your hot end is different, like mine is, then you just need to design this part specific to your hot end, specifically aligned. So this is also the place where your PTFE bowden is going connected directly to your hot hand. And last but not least, the slider. 
you print this as last because it's not very difficult to print, but it needs a lot of precision uh, to make it work. It needs to fit perfectly on the shaft with no plate. So you have two sides to print where the bearings are going to be, and you have the joint system coming this way, and at the end, the part going into the extruder. So when everything is assembled, this is what you should get. So this is the sliders with the bearing in it and perfectly sliding with just a bit of play after the join. So we now have all parts, we are ready to go. Let's put all that thing on the printer. Okay, so we have it here installed on the printer and that was actually the easy part as everything is fitting perfectly. Um, if you have a UMO with the old 1.5 board, I, I think the stepper cable are a bit shorter. So to avoid tension on the cable, I just make these a little bit longer. The only thing you need to check is that the rod here is perfectly aligned with the printer. We want it completely horizontal. So um, just measure from one side of the printer here and going over there. And if it's not perfectly flat, then you just need to adjust the set screw. Last check is that everything is moving freely, so there is no hard part, so it is very nice, and it turns beautifully here. So we are all set, and we can go with the first print. Before printing, there's still one thing to do, is to change the steps for the extruder. So we go into the control motion and the very last one is the E steps which should be to set to 492 and half for the one extruder so it's good here it's safe and now we are ready to go for the print